for being vulnerable. So let's like, talk about amazing. another part of the book where it connects your stories. So you mm-hmm. and yeah. Nicole connect too. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so we have the same sleep disorder. Um, it's pretty rare. <laughs> yeah, just you know, right out the gate. We have the same sleep disorder. It's called idiopathic hypersomnia. Um, Say that three times. Right? Short is for short. It's called IH. Um, but it's something that I know that I lived with for a long time without a diagnosis. Um, and you talk about it in your book. You have a whole section dedicated to it. And I mean, uh, like I was saying earlier, we connected uh through my mom and one day we i was scrolling on facebook and saw nicole's name pop up in an ih support group and i immediately texted her i was like hey like sorry weird question but do you have idiopathic hypersomnia and she was like oh my god yes and so that really just kind of solidified our friendship for us i think because i was like oh besties we're besties now (laughs) yeah having somebody to connect with on that because it's such a rare sleep disorder it's often overlooked, misdiagnosed, and it's definitely not talked about enough. Um, but it was just so bizarre to just run into somebody with the same one like that. That really mm-hmm. I don't feel like that happens very often. So I felt very lucky um, to be able to connect with you on that. But and I shout mean, out you should... to you too, Jordan, because she was one of my um, beta readers, which basically means she read a section of my book before it was published. And I had her specifically read I think that one and mental health, right? I know mm-hmm. I her how you do. Yeah. So she read my mental health and sleep disorder sections and I asked her for feedback and she helped me and she was wonderful. So thank you for that. Such an honor. It was. Um, but no, I was I was just so excited that somebody was finally speaking up for us. I was so excited to read that section for you and help you with it just because, again, like it's so important to educate people about this. Um, and you, I mean, you put so much research into this book as well. That's something that if you guys pick up a copy, you'll notice you, it's a very well-researched book. You uh, talk, a, you talk, God, you just talk about so many different things. I was trying to find specific examples, but the whole section really just gets me <laughs> so excited. Um, but yeah, so when, when were you diagnosed again, if you're willing to share? I should know. Uh, it's like 2020. Just, just been tired my whole life. Oh, uh, probably around there. 2021, yeah. something like that. 2020 was uh, spring of 2020 was when I got diagnosed. Uh, it was toward the end of college, I remember, because mm-hmm. I was still in college, and it was when I was driving back to see my parents one time that I fell asleep, and that's when they, like, I actually fell asleep behind the wheel, and that's when they officially were like, "Okay, something is seriously wrong," because they always knew something mm-hmm. was up, but we thought it was. Just, we're always yeah, because apparently that. people with IH can sleep like the dead. Yeah, yes. so well, let's talk <laughs> about that. What is IH? Uh, I was jumping the gun a little bit. So idiopathic hypersomnia is a sleep disorder. And essentially, it's like the, the part of our brain that controls our sleep is like turned on all the time or something like that. That's the very untechnical <laughs> way of explaining it. But we're just yeah. constantly tired and And idiopathic means they don't know what causes it correct Correct. yeah um i describe people as um it's like if you had your phone plugged in for eight hours it would never reach it no matter how long it's plugged in it'll never hit 100 percent. it's always at 50 percent or less and that's how Mm -hmm. we function every day because no amount of sleep will actually refill us so we are never at 100 Mm -hmm. percent, and we never can be Right. Yeah. And that was I mean, that was really hard growing up with without a diagnosis. I remember in high school falling asleep in class all the time. And I was always so embarrassed and so afraid that my teachers were going to think that I was being disrespectful or that I was, you know, uh, just being a lazy student or something, because I really prided myself on being uh, an A student and the best that I could be. And I was yeah, I was an academic, but I <laughs> Um, I really struggled with that. And I've also had an experience of nodding off behind the wheel. And it's very, very scary. Um, And I don't remember what, I I can't pinpoint any exact moment that led me to seeking a diagnosis, but I'm so glad that I did because um, when you're diagnosed with IH, you undergo these sleep studies and they'll have you come in uh, 
the evening prior and they'll monitor you while you sleep the whole night. And then the next day, if it's necessary, they'll keep you for the whole day and have you take naps every couple of hours and monitor your sleep during the day. And I remember I slept through the night. They kept me for the next day. And I think like the second nap of the morning, which was like at 10 a.m., I fell asleep in 30 seconds. Wow. I like head on the pillow out. I was, you know, and I felt like I wasn't even sleeping at all. I thought I had stayed awake the entire day. And they were like, no, dude, you fell asleep like for all five naps. So that was and my. You're all, hooked, you're all hooked up to, you're in yeah. a foreign oh, yeah. environment. So it's well, not just like a. And I remember many a times, especially like in the car or whatever, we're driving somewhere and I'm talking to Jordan. One second she's awake and the next I look over and her neck is like gooseneck, like hanging straight down. <laughs> like she couldn't even like lay down. She didn't like lay down and go to sleep. You know what I mean? She just like passed out like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, as her mom, I'm like, oh, pick her head up. That's not good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that neck pain though. <laughs> You know, yeah, but yeah, it, it, I yeah. thought maybe narcolepsy, honest to God. I mean, I because I just I was like, something is way off here. And it was very disconcerting. But even more so as an outsider here, I'm looking at two beautiful, strong, intelligent young women with a whole life ahead of them living in this very competitive, ambitious, driven world and um, watching you struggle because oh, I'm not, I'm not enough. I can't keep up with everybody. I'm tired. Like watching Jordan go through that, just even in in college, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, was very hard on the outside. So tell us what it's like from your perspective to have a sleep disorder. And then people who are like, go, 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 be this, be that, do all these things. Like, how do you do it? (laughs) (laughs) I do my best is what I would say. I've gotten a lot. And I think especially having Jordan in my life and writing this book, it, it feels more real to like know someone personally that and you're also close with that person mm-hmm. publishing it in a book. It feels more real. I've become a lot more. I mean, there's some days that I mean, it, it sucks. I just want to literally sleep the whole day and I really have no motivation, but I can't control it. So I just try to stay as positive as I can. And I'm just like, this is my life. So I do have to adjust things. I tell people I'm, I'm not, and I cannot be a morning person, but I can, if they can work with me, I can work around them. And I tell people like, when I say I'm tired and I have to like go, I, I mean it. And I, mm-hmm. I really can't. So I've just become a lot more, I try to stay realistic and very forgiving with myself. And then I do seek community and people like Jordan and times that I'm struggling or I have questions and we, we go back and forth and talk about this kind of stuff all the time. So I think having a community of people who get it and then just being a lot more forgiving with myself. So one of my favorite things about your friendship is when I hear the support my daughter even gets, she'll say, Oh, I was, I was like, aren't you going to out with uh, Nicole tonight? And she'll say, Oh, she texted me and she said, she's really tired and she can't. And I'm like, Oh, what a great friendship that like, there's no guilt there. You can just be honest and say, I, I can't function right now. And you're like, yeah, I got you. Let's reschedule for a different day. As to where in other friendships, people are not quite as understanding that you you have to take care of you first. I mean, gosh, you know, it's, it's not just being tired, guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. I understand that when my my child goes to sleep it's it was for like three days at a time like literally just Mm -hmm. begging her to wake up to just maybe eat a little bit maybe take her meds like if I could just get her up that long and so I worry about like how do you live on your own when you have a sleep disorder how do you how do you function when you're just exhausted all the time yeah I best you do your best. Yeah, I have a lot of alarms set in the morning. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, my neighbors hate me. Because <laughs> they'll. I mean, there's sometimes it will go off for maybe an hour. Uh, I, trying to get into a good sleep schedule. Sometimes if I know I have something very important that I have to wake up for that I cannot be late to, I will ask like my mom or someone else, like, can you call me and make sure I'm up and like she will that does not uh, work jordan does not answer her phone my mom well, <laughs> there was one time i had to catch a flight and it was she facetimed me multiple times and then i picked up and she's like are you up and i was like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she's like 
get out of bed and turn on the light and take your phone and show me you were out of bed because she knew yeah if I didn't physically get out of bed I wouldn't so I've I've used other re- people as resources mm-hmm. uh setting alarms and it just you have to have as much discipline as you I can I think it would sure. almost behoove you to have you know, people with this uh a disability if you call it that uh a service animal that would be trained to like wake you up like if your arm you know <laughs> and and so like, thankfully having a dog can <laughs> help with that I, I d- my dog Sam love him to death um he is my service animal and I was hoping for that initially that he was going to get me up in the morning and most of the time he does um she broke but it dog. it <laughs> He's kind of failed at it because he has started. He just he learned to sleep in with me. He sleeps till like noon. He yeah, and he doesn't bat an eye. He's just like, all right, we're sleeping in today, and he will gladly do it. So he's very emotionally supportive, um, <laughs> but not not so much a great service animal. <laughs> My um, cat is the same way. <laughs> No, they I just they learn. Um, learn. But I I had a question for you, Nicole. I know we've talked about this a little bit, but. Uh, mom you bringing up how i ignore your phone calls and things like that do you nicole ever deal with something called sleep drunkenness with this disorder yeah yeah don't talk to me when i wake up (laughs) sleep drunkenness for people who don't know it kind of sounds exactly like it is it's you just when you wake up you are so groggy and you're so out of it uh that in my case i do things that i have no memory of doing i um we'll have whole conversations with people that I can't remember because my brain has not yet woken up uh, or I will turn off all of my alarms. And I I mean, there've been times where I've rearranged all the apps on my home screen and I Mm. unlock it and I'm like, what happened? You know, like, and so it's a very, um, this disorder really interrupts a lot of different aspects of your life. And Nicole, you were saying you do your best. Like that's really all you can do. Um, and having your support has been so important to my healing journey as well. Just have it. I mean, all of my friends have been so understanding about this disorder and have opened their doors if I need to come over just for a quick nap in between errands or something, you know, so but there's having that support system is so important. And having somebody who truly understands, like, I'll never understand. I don't have your sleep disorder. I can say, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I mean, I get fatigue. I have my own issues with that. But even still, it's not IH. And so to have a friendship with somebody who can truly say, I get you, I think is so important. Like, I think that was a huge boost for you, Jordan, for your mental health to just finally have somebody validate how exhausted you really are. And to say, you know what? I see you. I recognize this in you and I will still be here for you. I will still be your friend. I will still show up. I will still like, that's huge. And I'm so glad you guys found each other. Absolutely. I really, am. it makes, it makes me emotional to think about. So honestly, because I remember like the first time I forget which one of us texted, but it was just like, I'm too tired to hang out. Can we reschedule? And the relief was, that came with that. I was that. so happy. I was like, <laughs> thank <laughs> God, I'm exhausted. Like Let's you're cancel. both like, I feel that I'm a core. <laughs> yeah. Like it was such an immense amount of relief because there is, you know, that need to appease people and be like, I'm so sorry. I know I don't have control over this, you know, but it's really, I don't have control over this. If I'm tired, mm-hmm. we're not hanging out. Yeah. That's just, you know, so to have yeah. somebody so willingly be like, oh my God, yeah, let's cancel. It's just. Mm-hmm. And the other it's thing amazing. I've seen is trying to function in the norm world when you're not a norm person. And I've literally, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. I'm going to share it anyways, Jordan. Uh, seeing my daughter drive herself beyond her limits because she's trying to work a full-time job. She's trying to work normal hours. She's trying to function like everybody else. She doesn't want to share with employers that she has these these things going on in her life. And, um, and then just watching her completely collapse because she's so exhausted. And one of the things I used to always say to her, so Jim Jordan, learn to listen to your body or your body's just going to take over. Like if your body is tired, you have to listen to that. And you've done much better over the years. And I know a lot of that is just attributed to the fact that you have a friend living a similar life. And we see that it doesn't stop you. I mean, how incredible is this? You're a a model, you're an author, you're all over town, you're networking, you're doing all of this badass stuff, you're in, in the capital. 
So what an inspiration to have each other to say, mm, yeah, we got this, but damn, it's not mm-hmm. going to stop us. We're still mm-hmm. going to, we're still, we yeah. still got lives to live. We're still in our twenties. Uh, Jordan's like, I'm That's going out in the call. I'm like, oh, we're going to have fun. We're going to go take a nap. Like, <laughs> no, no. When you guys are like, we're going out to an event. Oh, didn't she take you to some like cool club? All right. So Nicole, you know, all, all the times. ins and outs of all the cool places over town. That A, I would yeah. never go to because I hate dressing up. But I love when you guys dress up and you go out and then Jordan's telling me all these cool places like you guys have gone to go hang out. All the speakeasies and things. Yeah. You just know the ins and outs. You are just you're so cool, Nicole. I don't say that lightly. For for our listeners, you're the like one of the coolest people I know. Like you are iconic. Honestly, I look up to you in every way. So um, like you, and talking about that, <laughs> you did a model. You're you're modeling. You did like a runway. Like the confidence it takes to do runway stuff. Oh my god! But you well, were fire. Holy not, cow! Not only did she do runway stuff, the person, the artist that she has been modeling for, 